Hey YouTube, this is Run to Christ, and this right here is Robert Mueller. And this is a quote from him, and I'll read it out to you. In my view, after 50 years of service in the United National System, I perceive the utmost urgency and absolute necessity for proper earth government. There is no shadow of a doubt that the present political and economic systems are no longer appropriate and will lead to the end of life, evolution on this planet. We must therefore absolutely and urgently look for new ways. So what is the new ways? Well, one of the ways is this, the Global Goals for Sustainable Development otherwise known as Agenda 2030. Now this is a United Nations project, so it would be great if we actually knew who was behind the United Nations. So there was obviously a vast amount of people, but one of them was Robert Mueller, and he is known as the father of global education, and he received the UNESCO Peace Education Prize in 1989, for his World Core Curriculum, a global education program. And here are some of Robert Miller's quotes. We must move as quickly as possible to a one world government, a one world religion, under a one world leader. So he obviously shares the global mentality uh, that everything should be one world government, one religion, one leader. Okay, what's another word for one? Well, that would be uni. And that's where we get our term universal. Well, as we know, universal means Catholic. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why would Jews call their film studios Catholic? Makes no sense to me. Or Columbia Pictures. Real Jewish names there. So, Miller also said, tell hard had always viewed the United Nations as the progressive institutional embodiment of his philosophy. And he goes on to say, Telhard de Chardin influenced his companion, who inspired his colleagues, who started a rich process of global and long-term thinking in the United Nations, which affected many nations and people around the world. I myself have been deeply influenced by Telhard. Who is Telhard de Chardin? So first I'm going to read to you a section out of the book called The American Jesuits, A History, and that's written by a Jesuit called Raymond Schroff. And I quote, As war loomed in Europe in 1938, anti-fascist German and French intellectuals found new homes on American Catholic campuses. Wait a minute, did I read that right? Anti-fascist German and French intellectuals found new homes on American Catholic campuses. And yes folks, that is the same Antifa that you hear about today in the United States. They have their origin in Germany. They were the leftist opposition to the Nazi party. So, I'll continue reading from the American Jesuits. In 1940, Maritain, who had already published 60 books that would rank him as one of the greatest minds of the century, sat down with Fordham President Robert Gannon to discuss the possibility of his coming to Fordham as chair of the graduate philosophy programme. At the moment, Martin was opposed to the relationship between the Vatican and the Mussolini fascist government. He wanted assurance from Gannon that he could speak out on political views that were not governed by the content of revelation. Gannon, a pro-Franco conservative, refused. Thus, the greatest living Catholic philosopher went on to teach and lecture at a dozen other universities finally at Princeton, until 1960. Gannon, as a conservative spokesman, was typical of his era, but not representative 
of the momentum in the church. So it's talking about prominent Jesuits and the six that they name. I obviously was reading to you the fifth in the list. Now here is the six. Perhaps the patron saint of the French spirit infusing the American church had been dead only a few years. Telhard de Chardin, whose manuscripts on evolution and the relationship between spirit and matter, suppressed by his Jesuit superiors but handed over to his secretary, began to appear in books immediately after his death. Born in 1881, Telhard, who had the blood of Voltaire in his veins from his mother's side of the family, was raised in a house once frequented by Pascal. He entered the society at 20 in any studies in the Isle of Jersey and at Hastings, and two years teaching in Cairo, came under the influence of progressive Jesuits who chafed under the structures of Pius X's anti-modernist crusade. So it's interesting that he said that he had the blood of Voltaire, because uh, Voltaire was anti-establishment, and the establishment at the time of Voltaire was the Catholic Church. They were ruling Europe and the rest of the world. So, if you haven't seen this video, surprise, who created the Khazar theory? You might want to check this out. Because to learn who rules over you, simply find out who you are not allowed to criticise. Now this is a misattributed quote to Voltaire. It is not Voltaire that says this. You can check the video out for yourself. Dr Paul Gibbard uh, pretty much done his doctorate on all of Voltaire's works. Can assure you and I that that quote is not. Of Voltaire. And the weirdest thing is about this quote is that it was actually uh, written by a white supremacist anti Semite who was charged for having cheese pizza on his computer. And he wrote this quote in an article from the National Vanguard. And you can see here towards a new consciousness, a new order, a new people. Well, 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 well. That sounds very uh, much in line with uh, United Nations. So let's get back to Telhard. Here's a quote from his own writings. Although the form is not yet discernible, mankind tomorrow will awaken to a pan-organised world. And the pan just means in Greek all-encompassing. In other words, universal. And Robert Mueller also wrote, any Telhardian, which is somebody who studies the philosophies and works of Telhard, will recognise in this the spiritual transcendence which he announced so emphatically as the next step in our evolution. Well this guy's really quite, he quite likes talking about evolution quite a lot, doesn't he? And that comes from Telhard. So, I mean, is it possible that the Jesuits are responsible for the theory of evolution? Could that be true? Do you believe in the theory of evolution? Oh, I don't know. How about the Big Bang Theory? Do you believe in that? So, George Lemaitre, a Belgian Catholic priest, was the originator of what would become known as the Big Bang Theory. He called it the primordial atom. So, it kind of just seems like, um, I don't know, the Jesuits might be responsible for all of your atheistic beliefs, evolution, spiritual evolution, and the Big Bang Theory. Because, of course, you must know that evolution is an ancient pagan belief. You've heard of Easter, haven't you? Well, Easter, they have this um, egg-laying bunny rabbit. I don't know, that sounds pretty much like evolution to me. And who is it that's associated with Easter? Because obviously you must be aware of, like, Constantine, 
who Christianized paganism for the Roman Empire and it eventually became the Catholic Church. That's why everybody worships on a Sunday because it was the day of the sun, a pagan day of the sun that Constantine introduced. Yeah, that's right. So, Teilhard de Chardin was a French Jesuit priest, a eugenicist, a Marxist, a pantheist, and an evolutionist. He was heavily involved in the 1912 forgery that was called Piltdown Man, where they tried to convince the world that evolution is true by digging out of the ground some fake bones that they claimed was a link between modern humans and <laughs> uh, apes. I mean, really? So, here's a crack and tell hard quote for you. This will knock your socks off. And I quote, I believe that the Messiah whom we await, whom we all without any doubt await, is the universal Christ, that is to say, the Christ of evolution. Transhumanism, anyone? So Robert Mueller also said, the underlying philosophy upon which the Robert Mueller school is based will be found in the teachings set forth in the books of Alice A. Bailey. The school is now certified as a United Nations Associated School providing education for international cooperation and peace. Now Alice A. Bailey, who's she? Oh, she's a big proponent of the New Age. And who else is big proponents of the New Age? Well, that would be Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, the founder of Theophysy, and Annie Besant, her successor. Now, Theophysy, where have we heard that before? Didn't I do a video on uh, the Waldorf Steiner schools? Oh yeah, that's right. That guy was a member of the Theosophical Society before starting his offshoot. And yes, the New Age talks about this uh, coming of a cosmic Christ, or a, an evolved Christ, you know? Um, so, Telhard was um, obviously the originator of the New Age. Even New Agers themselves call Telhard the father of the New Age. Telhard has had a profound influence in the New Age movement and has been described as perhaps the man most responsible for the spiritualization of evolution in a global and cosmic context. New Age figure and self-described evolutionary biologist Jeremy Griffith described Telhard as a visionary philosopher and a contemporary truth-sayer or prophet. So when you see things like this Global Goals for Sustainable Development, otherwise known as Agenda 2030, and you see people involved in this agenda promoting it, people in positions of power, you should know where these agendas began. And just exactly who it was, who was the inspiration and the movers and shakers behind the United Nations. This has been Run to Christ. I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. God bless you all.